In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how to create a SharePoint hub site. So let's start off by talking a little bit about what is a SharePoint hub site. Now, a SharePoint hub site is typically the home page of your intranet. It can roll up content from all other areas of the intranet. It can provide a centralized place where you can create your colors, your branding, and that can then roll out to all the other sites which are associated to the hub site. And it can also share a navigation bar to all the other areas of the um, internet. So let's say, for example, across the top up here, you can see I've got my links to my department sites. Now, if I was to click on my IT department site, oh, just missed it. There we go. You can see the same navigation is across the top and it's using the same colors throughout. Now, that literally means if I wanted to change the navigation, I can change it at the hub site and then the navigation across the top will be the same throughout the whole of the intranet. That makes it nice and easy for me to navigate around. So the core kind of pieces of this is that we can roll up content from sites which are associated. We can also use the branding and the colors and we can also share the same navigation. We can also share permissions as well from a hub site to any sites which inherit it as well. So basically it's this kind of top layer. Now, if you're used to kind of classic or older versions of SharePoint, you'll kind of understand the topic of having sub sites. Now, basically hub sites completely replaces that kind of concept of having sites which sit underneath each other. So the reason being is that you can potentially have multiple hub sites if you wanted to, and then reassign sites to those different hubs. So you might have hub sites for all sorts of different things, um, but typically most organizations would just have the one um, as their kind of main homepage, and then most of their sites would inherit to that. But there's all sorts of reasons why you might have other hub sites. Other ones that you might say, for example, if you're in a very large organization or an enterprise, you might operate in the US, but you also might operate in Europe and Asia, and you might have different hub sites for those different regions of the world because it's gonna be completely different content. There's going to be maybe different policies which apply in the US, but not in Europe and vice versa. There might be news articles specific. There might be, you might be using completely different languages, for example. So there's plenty of reasons why you might have multiple hub sites. Um, so let's take a little look at actually now, um, how do we create a new hub site? Now, the first thing I'm going to do is navigate to office.com, which is the home page of Microsoft 365. I want to then click on the admin button on the left hand side. Now, I should say, um, as a bit of a prerequisite to this, you'll only see this admin button. You'll only be able to create a SharePoint hub site if you've either got global admin access to Microsoft 365, which is like the, the master access to all of Microsoft 365 within your organization, or if you've got the SharePoint admin role, which again is a Microsoft 365 admin center role. Once we're in the admin center, if I click on show all, I can then see I've got the SharePoint admin center option here. Again, if you don't see that, then you don't have the SharePoint admin role. If I click on that, that's then gonna take me to the SharePoint admin center. And on the left hand side, I'm going to click on active sites, which is going to show me all the different SharePoint sites that I have access to. Now I'm going to create a new site. So I'm going to click on create and I'm going to create a communication site. Most hub sites would typically be a communication site. Um, and if you want a bit of a breakdown about the difference between communication sites, team sites, I do have a separate video which explains the different types of SharePoint sites. So I'm going to click on communication site and I'm going to call this um, for example, I could call it the hub, but I think I've already got one called the hub. So uh, it's actually going to change the URL here to say the hub too. You can have SharePoint sites with the same name. You just can't share the same URL. So now I'm then going to say, who's a site owner going to be? Um, so I'm going to say it's going to be myself. And I can then set a language and also in advanced settings, I can also change the time zone if I wanted to, or give it a site description just to say, this is going to be my internet homepage. Now I'm gonna click on finish and that's gonna finish creating my new SharePoint site. Now at this point, it is just a communication site. It is not a hub site. I have not created it or um, made it into a hub site at this point in time. Now I've gotta be careful because I've already got one here. So I'm just gonna see, for example, this isn't the one I've just created here. Uh, I can tell from the URL, it's the hub too. Now if I select it, you'll see across the top up here, I've then got this hub option. 
Now, this is where you can either choose to register as a hub site or associate it to an existing hub site. I want to register as a new hub site. So I'm going to click on register as hub site and the hub name. Now, I'm actually going to call this the hub v2 because I've just realized uh, as I've been talking is actually when I come to associate sites with this in the future, I want to make it obvious between the two different types of hub sites that I have. Otherwise, it's going to get very confusing when I associate a department site to it and I've got two the hub options. So give them different names. I can then specify who can actually associate to this. So I'm going to say, just for now, it's going to be me. But I could list out a bunch of different people in here if I wanted to. Different people that can actually um, uh, register department sites against this particular hub site. Then when I click on save, that's I'm going to now register my communication site as a hub site. So if I then go to the site now, you'll then see... Um, I've now got the option up here as a hub site. If I just quickly, if I created this as a communication site, this option up here wouldn't exist. It's only after you registered it as a hub site, this option across the top will then uh, exist. So let's say, for example, I'm going to quickly add a new link across the top. So I'm just going to put a link to Google just to make it obvious when I associate this now to another site that it's sharing the same navigation. So I click on save. And I've got this link now at the top called Google. I'm also going to change the color palette. So it's obvious um, when I associate other sites to this, what it's going to do. So I click on theme and I'm going to make this a red theme. So it's really obvious. Click on save. And now it's got a red theme. So now my hub um, uh, is um, uh, the red theme. So now I'm going to do is go back to the admin center and create a new site. So I'm going to create a new department site. So let's say, for example, I'm going to create a uh, operations department site. So I'm my operations department site and the site owner is just going to be me for now. And I'm going to click on finish and that's only going to create me my operations communication site. So once that's created, I could either register or, or sorry, I could assign it to the hub site from inside the admin center by clicking on the tick, click on hub and then click on associate with hub. And then that's when I could select from this dropdown, say the hub v2, or you can do it from the actual site. So if you're not an admin, but maybe you're just a, a site owner of the operations site, you can go into the site and it's important to see it before it's associated to the hub, just so we can see what that looks like. So it's, it's still got the default green colors. It doesn't have a hub navigation bar. But if I click on the cog across the top and then click on site information and then select the hub v2, which is the hub site I've just created, then click on save. Watch as this will now transform. I've now got the hub navigation bar across the top with that Google link and it's changed the colors to the red um, on here. Other things we can do with hub sites is we can also roll up news from the sites which are, are inheriting it. So if I create a news article on this uh, operations site, I can then make it display on my hub homepage with a roll up. So let's say, for example, I'm going to create a quick news article. So I'm going to say this is uh, new starter, Joe blogs. And I am, I'm going to say a bit of text to say this week, whoops, this week we welcome Joe blogs to the operations department. We can set a background image. So I'm just going to rush through this really quick because it's not really about the news article. I'm just wanting to show you um, what it would look like when we roll it up onto our homepage. So he can be Joe Bloggs. Set him as the picture. I'm going to click on post news. So this is now created my news article on my operation site. So now if I go back to my hub site, Uh, once a page is loaded, you can now see that news article is automatically then rolled up onto the hub homepage. And that's because if I go into the edit of the properties, by default, you can see the news web part is selecting its news source from all sites in the hub. So all the sites which are connected to this hub site, it's going to pull the news articles out of. And we can do very similar things as well. Um, with the events web parts as well, where we can say all sites in this hub and we can pull out all the events from any sites associated to this hub site as well. I hope you found this video about how to create your own SharePoint hub site really useful. If you do, please like and subscribe to the channel for future SharePoint useful tips and tricks.